Charleston True Crime Tours is Charleston's first all true crime tour, which does not include supernatural fairy tales nor history. Today, I talk one on one with the founder of this tour, Benjamin Doyle, for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Benjamin Doyle. Welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. How are you, Quentin? Nice to see you as always. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, you know, you are the CEO and the founder of the Charleston True Crime Tours, which is Charleston's first all true crime tour that you say will have no supernatural fairy tales nor no history. Everything you say will be true crime. Let me ask you this, Ben. With all your experience and all your, you know, history here in Charleston and your family's history, why this? Why now? Uh, well... A few years ago, the idea came to me because of um, the top ten list of Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And I'm a big podcast guy. And I happened to notice that seven to eight of the top ten on Apple Podcasts lists were always true crime. And, you know, listen, I, I'm a fan myself. So I started kind of milling the idea around in my head. And um, we actually talked about uh, doing these tours in an electric small vehicle right. um, that didn't pan out for me but uh, what I wanted to offer from the beginning was an alternative for people who have been to Charleston many times yes. they've done all of the regular carriage rides uh, walking tours sure. ghost tours sure culinary tours, sure, yeah. and um, I want to do something current. You mentioned uh, that it's true crime, but it's true current crime. Mm. This, this isn't true crime from the 1800s. This is true crime going back as far as 1990. Mm. <laughs> uh, and that's about as far back as I go. Wow. So, um, and just about every story that I tell is somehow attached to me mm. personally. Um, I have some kind of inside knowledge or, um, you know, it's a, a friend of mine or a relative of mine yeah. that I, have, uh, you know, that, that, that these things happen to. Mm. But um, there's a lot of really great stories. And it's a great alternative, I think, to people who are, you know, a little bit uh, spent on, yeah. The history side of the city. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not disparaging that, but this is just something else to do. Yes, sir. You yes, know? sir. And Ben, let me ask you, from 1990 to right now, which is <laughs> over 30 years now, which one of those stories sticks out in your mind personally? Uh, probably, I would say, you know, and I think that the city would probably agree, is the, uh, the Emmanuel AME church shooting. Uh, and Dylan Roof, uh, story and just the, what a tragedy it is and and i even wrestled with telling that story mm. and um i asked quite a bit of people you know what they thought and what they thought of my delivery and what they thought of my uh the, the way i told the story sure and um and i i didn't get anybody that told me anything other than that that needs to be told mm. and the way you delivered it was exactly the way it needs to be said oh. and so uh, I'm you know it's a horrible thing but I feel the same way that it does need to be told you know it needs to be uh, told the story of just the actual event but also too that Charleston reacted the way we right. did which was really a model for the nation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got a heck of a lot more upset about something that happened in Minneapolis uh, as opposed to something that happened on Calhoun Street, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so it would have to be the Emanuel AME Church, the Mother Emanuel. So how does Benjamin Doyle tell this story in a true crime fashion? Well, um, what, what I kind of like to do is um, not just with the Emanuel uh, Church, but with everywhere, I like to take people to show them 
uh, the actuality of these places yeah. that this is still the same you mm. know look you know you see this door handle well that's mm. the door handle they open the door with to go inside uh, to murder this woman and uh, this uh, screen porch is this the screen porch that they cut mm. when they jumped in you know what I mean it's yeah. uh, seeing the pieces of these crimes and seeing the uh, you know relics or artifacts or however you want to put it um, it's just a, a really uh, interesting experience and it's a chilling experience yes. for most mm -hmm. uh, especially at the church yes, sir. and um, you know I respectfully to don't go in front of all these places and tell these stories mm -hmm. uh, we usually tell the story and then kind of roll by, you know what I mean? Right. Um, just because I, I don't want to uh, to upset anybody who's living in these places currently, yeah. um, or you know, uh, somebody who may have a, uh, an issue with me telling a certain story. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, and and uh, I've gotten a really positive feedback, and uh, I think people appreciate something else to do mm. and you know um, these big events that bring a lot of people into Charleston for instance wildlife weekend um, these are repeat people sure these are people that you know in the history side you count on them not taking any rides yes. or, or taking any tours right but this is a completely different thing, yeah. you know, and it's an ever-evolving thing. Yes, uh, as things happen, yes, <laughs> then they get added to the tour, mm. and um, you know, I have a hard time squeezing it into ninety minutes. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you, Ben, how do you and your tour actually evolve with history? Well, I, you know, it's it's almost impossible mm. to stay away from it. Mm. You know. Um, just because this is such a historic city, yes, and everything that we talk about happened in a in a historic building. Yeah, and uh, so I'll even catch myself talking a little bit about the the, the house or the building that this happened in, uh, just from so many years of, of giving a history tours. Right, and uh, I I try to go out of my way on my website to bill it as a non-history tour mm. you know and i, I believe uh, the, the verbiage is different that uh it is if, if you want to take a history tour then this isn't the one mm. you know the, the, don't come on this one because we only go back to the history between now and 1999 <laughs> wow uh so yeah i i just um I, I want people to have something else to do an alternative and i think people enjoy spending time with the local and uh, talking over things um, that are currently going on, mm. scandals and things that mm. are currently we're in the middle of. Right. And uh, it's sort of an inside peek, you know, um, and that's just beyond the true crime line. Right. But, yeah, we, we talk about all kinds of scandals and things like that. Wow. So let me ask you this, Ben. Where do you draw the line and make sure you don't cross that? Well, um, one thing that I did that made things a heck of a lot easier is mm. I do only private tours. Mm. Um, every group is the only group, mm. right? So if I get a party of two, it's a tour with two people. Mm. And I can take only up to six. Okay. So I can uh, tailor the tour to uh, my age audience. Yes, sir. And my, uh, you know, the something specific that they want to talk about yeah. you know yeah. and uh, we can concentrate just on X or Y or whatever yeah and it's really important I think that uh, you know I'm not pulling up into the front of these places yes. and uh, you know making something that I don't think anybody really talks about mm. into a attraction mm. you know and I don't want to create a <laughs> um, a place for walking tours and carriage rides to stop mm. per se. Yes, sir. But um, 
I think that's an important element is just kind of keep your distance, you show some respect. And uh, I have a whole section on my website about being respectful yes. and that a lot of these people mean a lot to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that this is my city and that some tragedies that we talk about that happen here are very, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're in my DNA. Yeah. And um, I, I just want to be respectful of that. And I do that uh, as you know, the best way I know how. So, which one of those historic tragedies actually resonates the best with your tours? Well, um, I would say probably, you know, um, you mean resonates with me? Yeah, personally? yeah. which one describes your tour the best? Uh, I would say probably the, the murder of Mary Lynn Wilson. Mm. And uh, it was only because I, I was very, very close to that family. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, her daughter's friends, mm. I was very close to. Um, and that really, really hurt me when that happened. Mary Lynn, and I don't want to get too much into my story, but uh, it really had an impact on me. And when I tell the story to people, uh, I find myself getting a little emotional, mm. uh, just because it's it it is very close to me. Mm. Um, and th there's some other aspects of that specific story yes, that sort of. Um, will eventually end in in a, in a positive. Mm. You know, Mary Lynn's law came out of that. Right. Um, so, I, and that that's another thing that I do is I, I try to, after we get through the, the awful part, yeah. sort of show some of the good things that resulted as of, uh, as of these things. Wow. So, Mr. Ben, let me ask you this then. How do you keep your emotions in check when you're giving tours on history like this? Uh, you know, I, I, it never crossed my mind, not even for a second, that I would have trouble talking about any of this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But the first time that I told the story about Mrs. Witherspoon, uh, I, I mean, I wasn't just choked up. I almost, I almost started crying oh. <laughs> because... I mean, yeah. I, I, these were just things that I didn't think about mm. until when I'm speaking them. Yes, sir. Then I'm feeling all like I did back then mm. when it happened, wow. and uh, it just comes rushing back. Wow. But at the same time, you know, I think that that shows my guests uh, that when I say that these things are, you know, important to me and that we need to be respectful yeah. of you know this and that yes, that I mean do you see how important this is to me mm. you know do you see how hard of time I have to get these words out to tell mm. you because mm. uh, when I say it was it, it was close it was very close Wow. so um, I, I would say that's probably the one that resonates with me, wow. um, and then obviously the, the church shooting will yes. be right after that. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, when I tell when I told that story for the first time, same thing. I yeah. I, I had no idea mm. there was this rush of emotion and yeah. how I felt that night, and how I remember seeing Carol and Murray on TV. Uh, I, I just yeah, it brings back a lot for me too, mm. and because I'm the owner and operator yeah. and the only tour guide, then every time I get to tell these mm. stories, so I, I, I'm assuming it'll get easier. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's stuff that's very important to me. Which particular historic tragedy, and I hate to say it like this, has been able well for you? How has that been able for you to be how? Which one of those historic tragedies, I should say, have been easy for you to tell? Well, I, I wouldn't say any of them are easy, but some that I am not quite as acquainted with mm. are a little easier. You know, um, 
if you pick up a newspaper and read the story about something horrific happening, yeah, it doesn't, you know, people don't get upset about that or, you know, they're probably maybe a little angry or something. Mm. Or, you know, you, you think, oh, that's a, what a terrible situation. Uh, so the things that I'm not that attached to, uh, those are a little easier for me to tell. Mm. But at the same time, I don't know quite as much you know, about those specifically, and I had to study and oh, yes. find and go digging oh, yeah. for uh, a lot of the information. Huh. And, um, you know, there's a few that I specifically uh, don't point out sure. where the house sure. was, you know, uh, or the precise place. Mm. And that is because uh, it's just out of respect yes. for, you know, um, those people. And so, Mr. Ben... When you tell, okay, which one of these tragedies, I should say, have actually made you appreciate history more? Um, probably the Emmanuel Emmy uh, church shooting, um, only because, you know, what it led to, yeah. and the city's reaction to it yes, sir. was... Um, was just so impressive and so encouraging and it led to the confederate flag coming off the state house uh you know and i'll tell you truthfully yes sir that was the very first time that i really saw man there are people out there that are extremely filled with hatred and and, and race uh, very racist people, you know. I I had heard about that, and I had heard you know stories that they did, mm. but I never thought that that you know if these were like boogeymen. And this guy, you know, I looked into and read his manifesto and looked into some of his childhood stuff, and and uh, I mean, I I didn't know people like that existed. Really? Mm. Yeah, and I, I I sure hope there's not a lot of them out there. Yeah, hope to God not. And Mr. Ben, which one of these true crime stories that you've told so far have you learned more about since telling? <laughs> um, probably, uh, again, the AME Church. You know, I, every every day I pick up little tidbits about this and that. Um, I've learned a lot more details about the church shooting. Mm. Um, also, too, whenever I'm telling some of like one of my friends or uh, a, a coworker at my old job or something, whenever I'm telling them what I do now or what I started, mm. they always have a tidbit that happens to tie them into it right. somehow. Right. And it's amazing how I mean. It's amazing how small a town this is. Yes. I mean, it is incredible. And, uh, yeah, th there is a direct connection through me to every single thing I talk about. Uh, be that through uh, another person and right. a relationship of mine. But, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, that's how I've learned a lot. It's wow. just, you know, my mother. Yes. My mother told me a lot. Mm. And, uh you know, some really, really great stories. Cause some of them go back a little further than I wanted to go. Mm. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I would say that just talking to other people has really helped a lot while, wow. uh, in learning more. Yes, sir. And, um, I've been approached while I was at, you know, walking by the AME church mm. and, uh, struck up a conversation and, you know, I learned a, a few more things. Mm. Just, just a yeah. haphazardly, somebody right. I didn't even know. Mm. Um, so it, it's a, you know, the city is also a great resource for, yeah. for me, yeah. the people. Oh yes, absolutely. And, and, and Mr. Ben, I know that you say you didn't want to take history back too far. Where did you want to draw the line when it comes to telling true crime history in Charleston? Well. Uh, I want, you know, I, the very first, and it's not even really a, a, a crime, and, I, and again, I don't want to get into the full story of it, but uh, one of my close friends 
when I was a young child, uh, jumped from the Cooper, uh, the old Cooper Bridge. Mm -hmm. And I remember that uh, he, he climbed over the chain link. Remember the chain link right. fence that oh, went yeah. over the oh, yes. block of trash? Right, right, right. He, he climbed that mm. and landed on the port. And that was the first, like, tragedy mm. that I remember in my life. Mm. Uh, I mean, just horrific. Mm. And be it was because he was young, and, you know, we, we were both young. Yes, sir. And, um, I mean, this is going to sound so silly, but... I remember in third grade with him when he beat me in a spelling bee hmm. because he spelled the word brief correctly. Huh. <laughs> Just weird little things yes. like that, you know <laughs> what I mean? And because that was the first thing that I really remember, that's kind of where I began and came forward. Mm. Um, that's obviously pre-1990, right. but, uh, you know, I wouldn't go any further back than than that incident, huh. and um, and I do talk a little bit about him on the, on the tour wow. because uh, you know he he was a, a special guy to me too. Yeah, and what else are you speaking or talking about in the tour that other tour guides are not talking about when it comes to true crime in Charleston? Well, uh, current current crimes. Oh yeah, current uh, yeah. issues. Current um, you know. Uh, tragedies mm. and I I think a lot of people don't want to touch the mother Emanuel right. I think a lot of people don't want to touch um, the the darker side of actuality as opposed to you know the supernatural side that's maybe maybe not you know um, you know, I what what uh, what I do is talk about things that are so current right. that you can still see right. what I'm what what you know uh, a piece of that incident. You know, yes, sir. And that's a that's a huge part. Everything that I that we do, I can point to something that you can actually see. Mm -hmm. You know, that was instrumental yes. or that uh, was there when it happened. Mm. Um, and there's, you know, obviously a lot of buildings in the city where similarities do. And there's another true crime uh, uh, tour of some sort, but it's it's old. It's it's of mm. the you know 1800s, wow. late 1700s. Wow. And so uh, I, I just, you know, I, I think these are great stories. When um, the Murdoch trial yeah. was happening, I saw the frenzy that that, right. that caused. And um, I'm in the middle of, and I just actually just wrapped up a, a day-long tour huh. that I wrote um, that goes to all the, the highlights of, yes. of that. Yes, sir. Um, and I, I haven't started advertising for that yet, but still a few things to work out. Yeah. But uh, that, that was really a frenzy mm -hmm. that, I mean, uh, I've heard from uh, people coming from all over the world wow. to little Wal Walterboro, you know? <laughs> Walterboro. <laughs> Just to see the, uh, the uh, courthouse yes. where, where he lives. <laughs> yes. So. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. Ben. So, who's your target demographic? Um, you know, typically it is more women than men. Okay. And uh, I would say age... Probably thirty yeah. to fifty. Mm. You know, mm. uh, maybe maybe a little older than that, but yes, right around that demographic. Mm. If you think of the people who watch Dateline, oh yes, and those people are very devoted, yes sir, to that show, yes and sir, forty eight hours, right. and they they just don't miss, them, right? You know. <laughs> And that seems to be that demographic right in that age group, mm. and most, like I said, mostly uh, women. Mm. But there are, like I said, uh, th there's a fair amount of, of men as well, yes, like myself, that are, are very interested in, you know, any new podcast or any new story that comes out, and then I, uh, I dig right in there. Well, and uh, I, I just can't miss it. Yes, sir. 
So let me ask you this, Mr. Ben. Why not a podcast versus a tour? Well, I, I may end up doing a podcast also. Okay. And uh, it would only be to discuss uh, sort of, you know, newer newer things that happen. Yes, sir. And so we, I guess it would be on a, a, a case-by-case basis. Sure. No pun intended. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I may add that in. Mm. But, like I said, I think the visual is very important. And uh, I can't do that through a podcast. Right. You know? Right. And what else can you do on this tour that you can't do anywhere else when it comes to this type of subject? Uh, well, the way I conduct my tour, um, because I use uh, my private vehicle, well, yeah. uh, it gives me a little bit more freedom. Yeah. And uh, I can, you know, get out of the vehicle. Yeah walk around and get back in and yeah. also too in this blazing heat we, we have air conditioning <laughs> so uh that's a big plus and uh i i would say too yes, be, because every tour is a private tour right i have leeway yes. to go really far with people who want to take it further right and to sort of you know go scoot around the edges if we've got young kids mm. So, uh, I, I, I have that flexibility and I don't know other than private guides, who else can, you know, has that, uh, I have the ability to, to, to talk for probably six hours straight huh. as well. Wow. So. <laughs> and so who's taking you up on that offer as far as going out on that leeway versus trying to stay within the, well, the, the true, the, the true, uh, the, what is a good word? Like the, the absolute obsessed true crime fan. Mm -hmm. right. They want to know everything. Wow. I mean everything. Yes, sir. And uh, even sometimes places I don't I don't want to go, so we don't go that far. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, th I mean there's both ends of that spectrum. Right. To to as far as I'm comfortable sure. with. And, um, you know, obviously, if I have little kids, uh, I keep it very vanilla. Sure. And I also, uh, you know, kind of only speak to the parents and, and watch what I say right. around the, the, the little ones. Uh, but, you know, the, the teenagers seem to really like it as well. Wow. Uh, just because it's current, yes, you know sir. what I mean? And yeah. I think that's easier for that age to wrap their head around, right. you know? Oh, yeah. And so what safety mechanisms do you have in place? Well, uh, obviously, I clean the car between tours. <laughs> and um, also, you're the only group in there with me. Okay. Um, so, I mean, as far as being jammed on a bus yes, or even, even, you know, crammed together with a crowd that walks together mm. around the city, sure. uh, you're going to be in a... In a vehicle with just me, mm. you know. So if you do some, <laughs> if, if there's something, if you get sick or something, yes, you know where it came from, right? And right. I gave it to you. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Yikes! <laughs> so where is the demand for this type of tour? Um, I'll tell you what: a lot of big cities have true crime tours. Hmm. Uh, New Orleans, for, for one. Yes, I sir. know Atlanta has. Uh, okay. True crime, Charlotte, that's true crime. Huh. Uh, I believe Nashville too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, a lot because when I thought when I when I started thinking about this, I thought, you know, in my <laughs> in my own little way, I thought I thought of it. You know, yes, I thought, sir. what a great idea. Yes, sir. You know, and then I looked online oh, yeah. and I see that they're you know a whole lot mm. in Vegas oh, yes. uh, all the places I mentioned yes, that, uh, it's it's a you know it's a, it's an industry it hasn't come here yet mm. until I've just introduced it right. and I think that it's going to get legs and I think that it's going to hold on and have its place mm. um, I, I see this as uh, a new side like the ghost tour when it sort of arrived here, yes, you know um so or at least that's my hope yeah 
that's 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 your hope. And what else are you hoping for this tour? Um, I hope that you know. I hope that I can do these victims some kind of justice by the way I tell the story, mm. and that I, you know, um, I absolutely don't glorify any of these, you know, these sick individuals, right. and. You know, I, I want people to walk away with a sense of, and I always stress this, that these are anomalies, right. you know, and this isn't like a, a, a murder mecca, yeah. and this city is safe yes. any time of day, yes. and that you can walk around by yourself, you know, I mean, that it's very, very safe, safe. and uh, that the things that I've picked out and found, you know, I had to go digging for them because they you know because there's very few things that that have happened and yes. now the things that have happened have been pretty damn bad <laughs> but uh mr mayor yeah so so how can we get in contact with you and learn more about this tour yeah so um my website is uh truecrimecharleston.com and um or you can call me, you can buy tickets online there, or you can call me at 843-442-3250. That's good to hear. All right. Yes, sir. Well, Benjamin Doyle, thank you so much for your time. I and, really appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, and I hope it gets you back on Quentin's Post Ups when the bugs are not around. <laughs> <laughs> it's great seeing you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.